Hi guys, my name is Brooklyn Connor. I'm with Carlson and Co. Real Estate, and I'm here with Nick Michelle from the Dream Team. He has been in real estate going on three years, a little over eight million in sales, and I just want to talk to him about his journey to get here, what's what it's been like now, and where it's going. Um, so I want to ask you, like, how how did you get started? What brought you in? What were you doing beforehand? Yeah, so um, I I actually grew up in Republic Washington, and uh, where is that? <laughs> yeah, so Republic Washington is uh, three hours from here, north, right by the Canadian border. And uh, yeah, I grew up there with a very blue collar upbringing. So like my grandpa had a farm, my dad worked at a lumber mill his whole life, um, and that's kind of all I knew when I was in Republic. So. Um, I didn't really want that same exact life for myself. So okay. when I came to Spokane, I went to Spokane Falls Community College. I uh, went there. Go Bigfoots. Yeah, go Bigfoot. <laughs> yep, yep. So I was a runner there. And then um, I'll cut this a little bit short, but I ended up doing a bunch of labor jobs in Spokane as well. And my back started hurting when I was like <laughs> 26. So yeah, I was having back issues and I ended up going to like a chiropractor a bunch of times. They couldn't figure it out. I ended up going to... Uh, I forgot what the doctor's name was, but you did trigger point therapy. Yeah, I've done that. And yeah. was trying to figure me out. And like he, craniosacral therapy. Yeah, and Yeah. He did x-rays on my back and everything. And he ended up saying like, he's like, I don't know. Like, okay, the discs in my back. One of them was actually, there was no liquid in it. Yeah. So um, I had really bad, I've had two really bad back injuries. And the doctor prescribed it to me as like, your back is essentially a bunch of stacked jelly donuts. And over time, over like years and lifting things mm -hmm. and just living, the jelly yeah. will slowly come out of it. But like you're 26 or I was 20. At the time, yeah. Uh, 26. Yeah, 26. He's like, there's no jelly left in your donut. And I'm like, can we put it back in? Can we just refill it? He goes, that's not really how it works. <laughs> yeah, so is so, that what happened to you? Yeah, same thing. And then he goes, he's like, I don't know what to tell you at this point. He's like, if I were you, I would probably find something does that doesn't involve like labor. If it's bugging you that much, you probably should like use your brain a little bit more. And I was like, <laughs> oh shit like <laughs> I've only done labor so um yeah after he told me that I was like I don't know what to do I don't have any experience I, di I, I didn't go to a four-year school so I didn't have like a, an education and, and I wasn't going to be a, like a, a lawyer a doctor you know people what were you going to school for at Falls uh criminal justice okay yep I was going to follow in my uncle's footsteps he used to be a border patrol agent over in Arizona and that's kind of what I wanted to do in the long term um and at the time, there's this guy named Dan Slagle who was in the Amway business. You guys might have heard yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I read this book by Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, great book. Yeah, and that book actually, like, changed my mindset quite a bit. And I was like, crap, what am I doing? So I wanted to get into sales somewhere. Um, so I ended up going on to Craigslist, looking at a bunch of jobs. And it was Larry H. Miller. Okay. Where I originally went there and had an interview with Bob McLean, who was the manager. And uh, he's like, yeah, just call me back in a couple weeks and we'll hire you. I completely <laughs> pussed out because I'm like, <laughs> I'm a small town country guy. Like I couldn't talk to anybody without like right. my hands are sweaty, like hearts beating and stuff. So I think that's the beginning of an Eminem rap song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's ready. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, anyways, where was I going with that? You were going to work at Larry H. Miller. You didn't call back. Yeah, so I didn't call back, and I went back at the time I was working at Timberline Construction, where we're crawling around on steel tables all day. <laughs> like, it sucked. I was working, like, 12 hours a day, making minimum wage and not helping myself out. So I'm like, this freaking sucks. So went back online, found a job at uh, Dave Smith. Okay. I went in all dressed up nice and talked to the manager. And um, he's like, come back Monday, and we'll we'll probably have a job for you. So I was like... I'm nervous. So I went back, got hired. That's like Dave 2018, Smith. 2019? This was in 2017, actually. 2017, okay. Yep. Okay. So I was I was at Dave Smith, where that's where my whole sales career launched, actually. I learned how to talk to different personality types, learned how to negotiate, get shit on every day. <laughs> so yeah, the car business definitely like toughens your skin. So we had talked a little bit before we started this podcast, and you had called it like building a callus. Mm -hmm. um, and I. My sister um, is a nurse practitioner in Spokane, and in her early career, she was working in the ER, and they call it, like, getting hard, and it's like, when you're in the ER in Spokane. Sounds like David Goggins. Yeah, you pretty much, like, everyone's yeah. a drug addict until proven sober. Kind of like, she just had to, like, not, like, she had to get hard, and it sounds mm -hmm. like that's what happened to you, too. Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, just learning how to, you know, <laughs> deal with objections every day and to have people tell you no, and... So yeah. when, when you were at Dave Smith, was there, like, one person who, like, motivated you, kept you accountable, 
you know, encouraged you to go into real estate? How did that come Actually, to be? Um, that's a good question. But before I even got into the car business, like I watched Grant Cardone and I'm like, this guy's pretty cool. Like he's a billionaire real estate investor. And it seems like he has like a lot of good mindset. Guys really love Grant Cardone. It's Zach hates Grant Cardone, by the way, but he's oh. like, oh, he's such a car guy. Like, and he's so, but I mean, I think he puts out really great content and he's like super knowledgeable. Um, yeah. It's like the same thing that like a lot of girls, you know, they like Barbara Cotran, you know, mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So who, but who was that person that motivated you? So yeah, like I said, it was Grant Cardone who originally motivated me. Not even, not even someone that you got to see and talk to every day. It was just like this online figure. It was probably just, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Dan Slagle. He grew up in my hometown. Um, he at the time was the regional branch manager of Thrifty. So okay. he had some sales experience and, um, he was making good money. He had, you know, good, it seemed like he had really good morals and values. He was married and everything like that. So I kind of, re- I looked up to him. Sure. Um, and he motivated me to get into sales and to just like always be, you know, working on personal development and just growing as a person. So he motivated me probably the most. Um, Alejo so, too. I, Alejo, yeah. yeah I, so he was the finance manager at Dave Smith. Oh, okay. Um, so that's me and him knew each other. We knew each other for a long time, and I saw him um, doing real estate stuff and like doing on the like on the side, also working at Dave Smith. No, he got his license while he was there, um, and then afterwards, like he started actually taking it serious. And I seen him doing transactions online and okay. doing these cool videos and stuff. I'm like, holy crap, what is Alejo doing? Um, and so he told me to to meet Zach. So okay, that's how. Yeah. So um, so when you entered, were you still doing car stuff on the side and trying to do real estate? How did that? Because nope, I mean, like, I, uh, it was kind be- of a great way to recruit clients. You're like, hey, you just got a car. Do you have a garage to put it in? I know <laughs> that would have been a good idea. <laughs> But no, after um, after Dave Smith, um, it was during like right before the pandemic, oh, actually. Right, so yeah. um, a couple of people quit who I like really respected and I liked. And sure. the dealership was, I guess I'll keep that off the podcast. But I ended up I ended up uh, just leaving. OK. And um, yeah, I went straight into real estate. Really, I got my um, it was in August, actually, okay. where I registered on Rockwell Institute to take Good. my training. I feel like we should all have a sweater that says, raise your hand if you were personally victimized by Rockwell, Rockwell. Institute. <laughs> Why is that? It, for me, it was just so dry. Oh, yeah. But the it, was way pretty, I, it was pretty rough The stuff. way I entered real estate was very different than most people. Mm-hmm. And so I just, like, I I just have a hard time sitting still. And you have to sit still. Oh, like, God, that stuff was brutal. And the heart, like, I remember, like, through Rockwell, like, you would, like, let's say you just click, like, a cat out of like hell and you just click 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 it still needed to run like 12 hours per that section it was rough i will so you would just like keep it open all day yeah i will say that um i was lucky enough to i was like super frugal with most of my savings and stuff so when i like started rockwell institute i did have 80 grand saved up so i was like damn yeah so you could have bought a house i know right (laughs) yeah it's it's pretty rough i wish i would have if i had the right mindset during that time I would have had already like over a hundred thousand dollars in equity, and you could, probably more than you that. You could have made three <laughs> percent. I know. I'm so sorry. But it's all good. So, anyways, um, when I was taking the the Rockwell Institute stuff, literally, um, I registered in the beginning of August, and I was done by September, like not even September. Sure. And then I went to Yakima to actually take my test because the ones in Spokane was all like pushed out because of COVID and stuff. Okay. So I ended up driving over and getting a getting a hotel and stuff and passed my test and ever since that it you was You took it one time? Took it one time, yeah, nice. and passed it and Me too. I was actually super surprised because I'm like <laughs> test anxiety, like it was loud in there and then well, and in, if... in high school and college I was like stupid when it came to math and stuff. I'm like, oh shoot, like I'm screwed, but ended up passing it and it was full steam ahead after that. And like I'm I just... like for me I love school and I loved like I love school. I love learning, like it was all good for yeah. me. Um, but that, I, I mean, I took the real estate test four years after college. I'm like, I have not studied. I have not taken a test in four years. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> and then I took it on my birthday and like, I love my mother. She's the best, biggest fan for me. But I get out of the car cause I had to fly home from Denver. I was living in Denver at the time, flew home, took the test. And as I'm getting out of the car, mom goes, I really hope you pass or else this is going to be a really awful birthday. Oh, and man. I was like, thanks mom. <laughs> That is funny. That's a lot of pressure. I was like, on your birthday, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go now and try and recenter my mind before I walk into this yeah. place. But 
it all worked out. That's awesome. <laughs> I kind of had a similar story actually when I was taking mine. Um, I was going to make a trip out of it and I was heading to Bremerton. Okay. And I'm like, if I fail this, I'm not going to go to Bremerton. I'm, I'm not going to go over there and like hang out. I'm literally going to like be sad and drive back home and be depressed and retake it. So yeah, yeah, I was like, well, and for me, I was like, I don't, I can't keep flying home to take this test. Like the, I was able to kind of kill two birds with one stone with it being my birthday weekend, fly yeah. home, do it. And so I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, it, but it all worked out. But I was like, if I don't pass this, my mom's going to be like, I told you so. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, okay, so your first year in, you were telling me that you did like 12 deals, which is incredible. It's like essentially a deal a month. I feel like that's everyone's like first year goal is like, if I can just get one paycheck a month, I can yeah, stay afloat. Definitely. How did that look? How did your first year look? Um, my first year, actually, like I was not all in at that point in time. Okay. So I wish that I would have known better because I could have been more structured and I probably could have done way more business than that. But do you um, start at Dream Team and stay at Dream Team? Yeah, I was. Uh, I met up with Zach, and then I I've been with Dream Team like you've my never... whole career. Yeah, just different brokerages. Start yeah. off at PRS, and sure. Then came but you've over always stayed with your core group of people. Yep. Good for you. Yep. I figured that like success is within yourself, so I'm not like searching for like the magic ticket. I'm like, I yeah, just got to work hard. And I don't know if you noticed, but I feel like there's a lot of people like jumping ships and changing ships and going on the do- dock. I'm yeah. very into analogies. I'm like, there's people getting off the boat, going on the dock, getting in their car, driving mm-hmm. away. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I think everywhere essentially has the same pie. It's just what kind of pie mm-hmm. and you get to decide how you want to cut it. Exactly. I think a lot of people are looking for success in somebody else. It's like, oh, like, oh my God, this guy did 70 deals. So maybe if I'm like with him, then I'll do 70 deals. It's like, no, they can teach, they can teach you like, say like, you know, they can give you motivation and tell you what to do, but you're the one who actually has to take action. And that's the thing that like, that's what I do. It's like, I take action and just got to work. It's like the same thing. And like, Real estate's not very different from like really any other angle of your life, how you mm-hmm. date, how you lose weight, how you like interact with people. But if you, if your friend, you just noticed lost like 50 pounds, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I'll just do what she does. But it's like, that might not work for you. Also, like you can't just hang out with her and like dissolve 50 pounds. Yeah. You have to like do this really annoying stuff that she's doing. Mm-hmm. And That's be it. consistent. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep going through the grind. What do you like? What have you loved about real estate? What has been like a I call it like a rose and a thorn? Like at the end of the day, you're gonna keep the rose, but like there is definitely some really hard things that you've had to like get your mind around or just maneuver on deals consistently. Yeah, so so for me, like one some of the best things has been being my own boss. Like I have my own schedule, but I'm like I'm very military, so I'm super structured anyways. But I do like the feeling that I'm building. I'm building my dreams. I'm not building my boss's dreams. So like the work that I'm putting in today, like I'll be able to see in the future. So it's like, that's really cool. Having my own systems, like I can go to, you know, I can go get coaching mentorship and like build my own brand up too. So that's been super cool. And then some of the things that has been rough for me, which has been, it's been great too, because I'm growing. If you're not, if you're always comfortable, then you're stuck, right? So you have to get uncomfortable. It's like, I get... I get uncomfortable being comfortable, which is like a double entendre. But That's the OCD. Yeah, it is. I have, I have OCD. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> like when things are going a little too good, I'm like, mm, I better throw a wrench in this. Like yeah. if things are like a little too. That's that's cool. Not a lot of people have that normal. Kind of mindset, yeah. So. I When I was living in Dor- Denver, I thought I had my like quote unquote dream job, super cool house, mm-hmm. awesome friends. Like everything was good, but I looked around and I was working with people 10 years older than me living my same life. And I was like, I don't want to be like 34 living this life. I like, this is fun for like two years. So I'd gone to my boss and I was like, this year I want to make $75,000. And she was like, no one in the company makes Mm -hmm. $75,000. And I said, I bring in 60% of your business. (laughs) I should be making $75,000. And she was like, just no one here makes that. And I was like, how do people not make that in Denver? Like the median income is a hundred grand. Yeah. And she was like, like, we love you and you do a great job, but that's just like, we don't know if you can do that. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I don't love that. A, you don't support it. I mean, she was a brilliant boss. She's an incredible businesswoman. But I was like, I don't want to, I'm not okay with like being comfortable, like just kind of coasting through life like a sailboat. Like I want to be in a speedboat. Well, they say when you stop learning, then you start dying. Yeah. Like you always got to be continually like learning something new or else you'll start going backwards. Yeah. So I called Tyler and I was like, 
on average, what does a real estate agent make? And you have to keep in mind that for the four years prior, Tyler kept asking me to be in real estate. And I was like, no, never. I won't do it. That's crazy. And uh, I was like, well, on average, this is what they make. And I was like, okay. I was like, this is how much I do in sales. And this is how much I make. He's like, you would make twice that if you were in real estate. And I was like, well, okay. So I came home, went through all this stuff, decided on it. But when I had told my friends I was leaving, they're like, why are you leaving? You have, like, you make such good money and you're, you're doing so great. I was like, it's too easy. It's too easy. I need something harder. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people don't question that like you and I do, where I'm like, how can I make my life more difficult? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of people like to do that. Um, what is something that you've challenged yourself from January to now? So like first quarter. Yes. Okay. So, so January to now, like I was saying is socially, I wasn't the best because I grew up in a small town and was always doing labor jobs. So I never had exposure to a bunch of people. So this year I'm really challenging myself to do a lot more networking and obviously I'm doing a podcast right now. So I'm trying to just... Am I pulling you out of your comfort zone? Uh, it's not too bad. Ah! Like, <laughs> I mean, I haven't done a podcast podcast yet, but yeah. That's cool. Like... So yeah, just being in front of a lot of people and networking. I mean, I've always been really good at like one-on-one. Like I door knock all the time. Sure. And it's, I'm not even... That doesn't make me nervous at all. So it's like, oh, now what do I got to do? Public speaking. That's something that I'm trying to, I'm doing small groups now with Dream Team. So I'm like, we have a couple people, like I'm talking, I'm running classes and stuff like that. So that's been a challenge, but it's been great because uh, I feel like I'm helping. So um, I still have, but I used to have a really, really bad speech impediment. Like, don't ask me to pronounce dinosaur names. It's going to go awful, but I love dinosaurs. So say Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, <laughs> I like got on Instagram live one time because I was running in Brown's Edition and they have mm-hmm. this giant T-Rex. And I tried to say the whole name and Zach's like, what did you say? And I'm like, I have a speech impediment. That was my best attempt. Oh, man. But public speaking was so hard for me for so long. That's crazy because you can't even tell anymore. Like, Yeah, yeah there's there's certain words that still don't come out, right? But that's, yeah. we just moved past it really fast. Um, But I actually had to speak at my sister's wedding Mm -hmm. and that was like my first speaking like in front of like 250 people and I was like that's pretty that's a lot of people yeah I mean a drink definitely helps calm the nerves but I was like I I don't like four or five (laughs) I was like I don't want to butcher this I don't want it to be awful you know when you awful weddings you go to yeah and you're like someone please take the microwave microwave microphone (laughs) away from that person speaking I was like I don't want to be that person so I rehearsed for like a month on this speech that's and what it, I would have to do, too. Actually, and then it turned out great. And I was like, well, if I can do that, then I can do anything. Like, if I who can't say, like, girl right for the first 15 years of my life, mm-hmm. I can totally public speak. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. If you if you can do it in front of 250 people, that's that's a lot of people. So. In a big family. Big family. Yeah. Um, well, as far as, like, social networking, are you part of, like, YPN? Do you like going to, like... <sighs> Like, YPN has been huge for me. I think I get a lot of it. I love, like, the social networking. And I love that they bring people in from out of town. Like, my, I feel like my cross-country networking has mm-hmm. really improved from that. Like, I got to meet um, Christopher Jensen and Lori <clears throat> Marr, um, Robbie T from Hatch Realty. Like, those people, which you don't realize how influential that's going to be in your career until you have a client that's either moving or selling, vice versa, and then you have, like, a great referral partner. Yeah. Like last year I did 5 million in referrals, which was, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I Do you like try to do a lot of like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook? Um, so as far as the YPN, the Young Professionals Network, I've, I haven't been a part of that, but um, I'll bring this up. Uh, there's a guy in Florida, Brian Casella, yeah. who mentored Zach actually. And the guy is like a savage. He's awesome. He has so much like mindset stuff. And uh, he came up here and he did some trainings and he actually, another guy, Drew Wilson, um, he came up here, he was making like $40,000 a month, just door knocking. That's all he did. He didn't have like leads coming in. Was that the same guy that was putting out like 60 directional signs per listing? No, that, w- that wasn't Drew. Oh, no. okay. um, but he was, uh, he was knocking a hundred doors five days a week. Like he stayed super strict with it. Um, and yeah, he was making 40,000 a month. So he came up here and like, I was a sponge. I was like hanging out with him. Like, dude, like, tell me how to do this. I was listening and he like tweaked everything. We still talk to each other. Actually, I call him once in a while, role play, stuff like that. So So, and door knocking is primarily your lead source. Yeah. Door knocking for me. That's like, I think that's what I'm good at. So I've stuck with it. And, um, 60% of my business came from door knocking. So yeah, I think that is, uh, 
Which I think, like, however you want to do it, if you want to door knock, if you want to just be, like, the biggest Instagram, social media mongol, Mm -hmm. like, you want to dial, whatever it is, you just have to do it consistently. I want to do that, too, but... You want to be what? Social media, because I feel like a lot of business, every person who has a huge social media, you're just getting that many more eyes on you, so... Yeah, and even if those eyes who are watching you don't ever bring you business, they're going to tell their friend, like, oh, my gosh, I see this person, or... Like, I remember, which I'm sure you have too, like, a friend of a friend or a family member's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, I saw your sign around town. Yep. Like, the more eyes, the more exposure, the bigger the platform, the more it's going to come. Exactly. Yeah, that's... Has there been, like, a big, like, mindset, like, mantra or mission that you've, like, held true? For... For what you're doing? Like, what this means to you? Yeah. I mean, if you know what your why is, then that's going to keep you, like, the days that you're like, this sucks, I'm tired, like... I've been getting shit on every day and people tell me no constantly. Like you got to remember like why you're even doing what you're doing. So for me, like I don't have a family yet, like my own family, but I want to be able to take my immediate, like my dad and my mom and sister, like it'd be cool to like take them on cool trips and stuff like that. Sure. And, um, you know, have some residual income, like I want rentals. So I feel like that would be, you know, it's freedom. I'm chasing freedom. Sure. Like I don't want to be stuck in and I don't want to ever go back to a nine to five. Like, that's what wakes me up in the morning is, like, knowing, like, in the gold mines, like, my dad lost his arm working in the gold mine. And it's like, I don't ever want to have to do that. So I'm going to go knock on 100 doors and people can be like, no, I'm not buying. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, you're like, never going to see like, them again. Or person. maybe you will see them again. They'll be like, oh, hey, you. Yeah. Um, I bartended and, like, love hate relationship with bartending. Probably, like, blue collar work. Like, working yeah, it's the mine. still hard work for it's, sure. It's a love hate. There's days that you're like, wow, these people are great. But also, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt about bartending. And I was like, I will do whatever it takes to never have to do this again. As much as I, like, loved it, I was like, I hate walking to my car at night. I hate that my workday starts at 2 p.m. and gets over at 3 a.m. I hate that I'm sticky. You probably had a lot of, like, weird people, too. Like, you probably had a lot of, being a bartender, you probably get, like, everyone's drunk. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But everything was sticky. Um, I just, it wasn't for me. And so I was like, I will do whatever I can to never have to rely on somebody to pay my bills and have to do a job that I don't love. Um, we have like a couple minutes left. So I just want to go over some fun questions. Would you rather? And then, you know, like the, she's a 10, but game. Okay. 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 Would you rather go show a remote listing with a client that you've never met before and your EQ doesn't work? Oh, crap. Okay. Or go show a multifamily home to, like, a pretty high-maintenance buyer where the units are completely occupied still. I would probably rather go to the high-end, like, clients to an occupied house. I think no, no, not high-end. Oh. High-maintenance. High-maintenance? Like, I feel like I'd rather go to the high-maintenance thing because then I wouldn't be feel like I'd be wasting my time if I was in the middle of nowhere and my e-key <laughs> box didn't work. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, she's a 10. Great buyer. Um, he or she, however they identify. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like financing set up. They have the down payment. Um, they're good to go. But their expectations in reality are just so far off from one another. They have champagne taste on a beer budget. Okay. She's a 10, but she's not. Would you like? Where do you rate that on like a workability scale for you? God, if they're not, if I mean, if they're not listening to me and taking my advice, <laughs> like I've had the the champagne taste on a beer budget, and I'm just kind of wasting my time. So as far like you want me to rate this on a scale of yeah, one to ten, I, I, I would say like four. <laughs> four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I had one other one, which is: Would you rather for the rest of your life only work with buyers or only work with sellers? Um, I would definitely want to only work with sellers. Sellers, okay. Because I think that's where it's at. Like, if you can just only do list- listings and you control the market. Okay. I think every, yeah, I think everyone is so different. But Yeah, true. Uh, did you en- did you do mostly sellers when you started off? Uh, when I was brand new, I was doing buyers. When I got into the door knocking, I was doing mostly, I started getting listings. Sure. And that's, so, yeah. Yeah. It's been pretty close, though. It's been pretty... Oh, I'm, 50, 50, like, so. for sure more buyers than sellers. I'm like, okay. I'm like three-fourths of my business is buyers. Yeah. Um, which was, like, I'm fine with. I don't really care. I love negotiating. Mm-hmm. And and both, mar- like, I, 
I'll just do whatever it takes to make it happen. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what it's about. So um, thank you so much for being here. I really yeah, appreciate you. your insight. Uh, sounds like you've had, like, quite the journey to get here. And I have nothing but, like, knowledge that I that you're going to do amazing things from here on out. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank, thanks for having me. Yeah. This was fun. Thanks, guys. Drop any comments in, you know, the comment section. Follow us on YouTube, and we'll see you soon. See you later. Bye.